overview of OpenShift. OpenShift is a platform as a service or pass which allows you to serve your applications. OpenShift offers the abilities to deploy your web application code using a library of predefined platform images that build your environment. OpenShift also allows you to build and obtain your Docker images and use them to swiftly deploy your applications on top of them. For example, OpenShift will create an environment, install Ruby, push code, and add MySQL, and will automate scaling so as a developer, you don't need to worry about the application, the platform, as it's taken care of by OpenShift. OpenShift is built on top of core technologies, Docker-based containers and Kubernetes system for orchestration. So let's have an overview about these two technologies to better understand how OpenShift works. Docker is a lightweight portable format that provides images of an application to run on different environments. It also includes all the dependencies needed for the application and underlying systems to get deployed and run as needed. We need to go beyond a single container and have the capability to run and manage multiple containers to enable a production-ready environment. With multiple containers running together, things can get complicated as we need to worry for load balancing across containers, storage mounting, adding such containers on an infrastructure and rolling deployments. Kubernetes, an open source project created by Google, manages containerized applications across a set of containers or hosts and provide mechanisms for deployment, maintenance, and application scaling, while Docker packages, instantiates, and runs containerized applications. OpenShift is a layer on top of Docker and Kubernetes that makes it accessible and easy for the developer to create applications and a platform of deployment for containers to both development and production workloads. OpenShift provides a web-based console that makes it easy to perform needed activities like managing deployments, pods, creating services and routes, and other features that you will need to run projects, as we shall see later in this workshop. OpenShift also has a command line tool called OC, which is a command line executable that's available for Microsoft Windows, Apple OS X, and Linux that you can use to perform all the operations on OpenShift. Kubernetes groups resources in namespaces. A namespace will describe the application to be deployed. As such, all resources within a namespace are accessible as a whole, and no security model is in place to allow or deny access of these resources. So, in other words, a user with the access to the namespace will always have access to all the resources within the namespace. OpenShift introduces the concept of a project. A project wraps the namespace and provides a security model based on users and groups. It allows for the authentication and authorization of users and enables a real multi-tenant platform to be used via setting the right access rights of projects to different groups of users. Kubernetes provides mechanisms to run containers and scale them for production. OpenShift builds on top of it to provide developers with the features to manage their DevOps. At the heart of OpenShift, pods are the basic units. A pod runs on a single node and can run one or more containers. The container within a pod will share the same IP address of this pod. They also share storage. A container only defines a virtual boundary of compute and memory resources and assigns them to a platform like Tomcat or MySQL. The containers spin up from an image. An OpenShift uses Docker images to spin up containers. Containers will communicate with the same pod via localhost. An application can get scaled up and multiple pods will spin up 
to serve the same application. So pod A, for example, and pod B will both serve the same application. In this case, several copies of the pod will run and have their own state. Each of the pods will have their own IP address and typically run on a node. Since each pod have its own IP address, a service is created to provide a single interface for the application and it provides a standalone IP address of its own for the application to be accessed. This service, however, is only available locally to this environment. To provide public access, a route needs to be created. Routes act as a load balancer across pods and DNS that provides an addressable name for the application to be accessed. So, pods are deployed on nodes and share the node resources like the persistent storage volumes. Pods are made available via services. A service is a name representing this set of pods. Pods are also made available to external world outside the cluster using routes. The external DNS entry that is created to point to the service so it can be accessed. The management of pods is maintained by a replication controller which ensures that a specified number of replicas of a pod are running at all times. If pods exit or are deleted, the replica controller acts to instantiate more up to the desired number. Likewise, if there are more running than desired, it deletes as many as necessary to match the number. The build configuration holds the definition of how to build a new image to be deployed. The image can be created from one of two resources. It can either be created from your source code and a base image from the source to image or S2I. And S2I provides builder images for common languages like Java, Ruby, Python, or PHP. Or the image can be a Docker-based build from a Docker file. The build configuration is also tied to the base images or source code via webhooks and will be updated automatically if a change to the source code or base image happens. And this is very important feature as it enables the developer to update code and push it to the source code repository and the webhook will automatically trigger the build configuration to get updated. So for example, if you are using an application server and a Git repository with your code, S2I will download the base application server image, clone your code repository, run the build, and then create a new Docker image that contains your whole stack, and then deploy this build and start up the resulting container. The build process produces an image that gets stored in an integrated Docker registry and is used for the application deployments on nodes. OpenShift tracks images through the image stream component. The deployment configuration defines the template for the pod and manages the deployment of new images or configuration changes. So think of a deployment configuration as a single microservice. The replication controller will then manage the pods and keep them running, as we mentioned before. So this was a short introduction to the OpenShift architecture and components that can be very helpful with the rest of this workshop. I hope this introduction wasn't very long, so let's do some real work and get to install our own environment.